How did you first start working with successful people and what were some of the challenges you initially faced? Someone told me once good work leads to doing more good work. So these projects would lead to something else. And I would mentioned the book of Manning. Well, I had a shoot with Snoop and his son and he really liked the book of Manning. And he just said to me, he's like, we should do the book of Snoop Manning. And I was like, dude, I will do anything with you. Just like you're a legend. And he mentioned that like he coaches his son in football and wanted to do something. That's all I needed to hear. And I, I don't treat celebrities different than I would treat anyone else. I try to respect everybody. Uh, I don't treat anyone that they're a, anyone that they're above me or below me on the set. I don't care if it's a production assistant or it's Shaq. Um, to me, everyone's worthy of respect. So I don't look at it any differently. I know their time is that maybe more, more tight. Um, so Book, Book of Manning led to working with Snoop Dogg on this show called Snoop and Son. That was the first project we did together. And basically it was about Snoop's son was a senior at this high school, Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. And he was like a star football player. And what was great about the series is because his son was an amateur athlete at the time, no one could get paid. And because of this, like Snoop's management, like no, they couldn't get paid. Like no one around them could get paid. It, it was a very strict rule with the NCAA that doesn't exist anymore. But at the time you could lose your eligibility. So a lot of peripheral people just kind of went away and it became a real opportunity to just work with Snoop. And uh, in the same way, like I wouldn't treat him different than anyone else. I did push him a little bit to open up, maybe be emotional. Like for instance, he's very more like father's knows best, like 1950s kind of dad where he provides for his family, but he's not the first to give you like hugs and, and all of that. So I said, I'd really like to get a scene where you tell Cordell that you love him. And I won't tell you exactly how he phrased this, but <laughs> basically said that he did not want to do it and uh, <laughs> it's just so and I said you got to do it like and I said what's the downside to doing it like I just asked him and I said I said I said something like if you if you do it you won't regret it but if you don't you'll regret it the rest of your life I said something like that and then afterwards he like was really appreciative that I kind of pushed him to do that so doing this Snoop and Son show and I see Lorenzo Fertitta's son is on the team. Lorenzo Fertitta is the owner of the UFC at the time. I'm a huge UFC fan, huge. I uh, love MMA, love fighting. And I was like, I really wanna work with the UFC someday. So I say to Cordell, I go, you should go to a UFC fight. That'd be really good for the show. Would it be really good for the show? I don't know. I wanted to go to a UFC fight. So Cordell went. We got all this access. I got to meet Dana White, meet Lorenzo Fertitta, express to them how much I'd like to work with them one day. And also Lorenzo Fertitta's son was on the team. We mic'd him up and I just gave them the footage. And I think as a father, he really appreciated that. So um, that led to working with the UFC. So I, I'd meet somebody and it would lead to meeting someone else. And also I think this is an important lesson uh, try to be of service. You can be of service. You don't have to have money to do that. And you can be of service to celebrities. If you, uh, Celebrities are getting asked for stuff all the time. All the time, people are coming at them. Help me, help me do this. I wanna do that. Can you take a selfie? Can you call my mom? It's just people grabbing at them. I say, is there anything I can do to help you? Maybe I could film something for you for free put something together, edit something, do something. You do that, you, you, you're of service and it's genuine. You don't want anything else in return. Um, that's a good way to form a relationship with people. That's how I met Rob Lowe. Um, Rob Lowe was gonna narrate. He just wanted to narrate. And I said, well, what, do you, what else do you wanna do? Do you have any ideas? Yeah, I'd really, I'm like, all right, let's do them. I'll, I'll do the work. So he started looking to me as somebody to work on unscripted ideas with. So I, I would give that advice. Try to be of service. 
you know? And, that, and that's true, not even with celebrities, but on a film set, you know? If you're a production assistant and you wanna be a writer, well, guess what? When you're on the film set, be a good production assistant. You're not a writer at the time. You're a production assistant. Be of service. I've seen people who are like begrudgingly doing their job because they want to do, be something else. Well, be invaluable at whatever you're doing. And then other people, they'll want to keep having you come back. And then you say, hey, I'm a writer. You read my script. They'll be like, yeah, I'll read your script. You're great at doing, at being a grip. So yes, I will read it. And um, so try to make yourself valuable in some way. You had a quote on your Twitter that I, I love here. You, t you tweeted it. You put, this is some of the best advice I've ever read on Twitter. If you aren't willing to look like a foolish beginner, you'll never become a graceful master. Hmm. Um, I, don't I know, said that? Yeah, I don't know what date that was. I'm, I kind of scoured your, your, your hmm. Twitter for just interesting uh, tidbits. And I found that. And I think you were quoting someone. I don't know. I mean, I try not to have... <clears throat> too much of an ego. I'm not afraid to look foolish uh, or, or to say I don't know, but I'm willing to find out. Uh, I think that's important too. And uh, I think I, I prep a lot on my, on my whatever I'm working on, especially on my movie, I prepped a lot. But I'm also willing to say, yeah, we could try that or no, maybe that's not working. I, I think maybe if you think about ego, a lot of times it's insecurity comes through. So there's no like, there's no one right way to make an egg. Some people can scramble them. Some people can keep them hard boiled. So with production, uh, I can say like, yeah, I messed up. In fact, I had a meeting this morning that I totally forgot about. And I was at the gym and I got the notification on my phone I was like, yeah, boy. So I called him up and uh, I was, my instinct was to lie and I really try not to lie at all, try to be honest. And I just said, I just totally screwed up. And I just completely was honest. I said, I'm at the gym right now, did not plan accordingly. I'm really sorry, I will Zoom with you or I can be there in a half hour. And the guy's like, yeah, just come in a half hour. And then he said to me, that was really, really refreshing that you were just honest. So. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to be that way, you know. That being said, if you make a mistake, you don't want to make it twice, you know. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to apologize, say you're sorry, but you don't want it to keep happening either. So it's, uh, there is a balance you need to strike.